In this video, I'm going to talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of ionic compounds. So let's start with the first example on the left, sodium chloride. How can we draw the Lewis structure for that particular ionic compound? Well, first, let's start with the sodium and the chlorine atoms. Sodium is an atom with one valence electron. Chlorine is a nonmetal with seven valence electrons. Metals like to give away electrons. Nonmetals are electronegative and they like to acquire electrons. So sodium is going to give away its one electron to chlorine. And when it does so, it's going to become a metal cation. It's going to develop a positive charge. Chlorine is going to develop a negative charge. Now the way we're going to write this is we're going to use brackets when writing the Lewis structure for these ionic compounds. Chlorine now has eight electrons, I mean eight valence electrons, or four lone pairs. And so we're going to put this inside a bracket, and we're going to put the negative charge outside of the bracket. So that's how we can draw the Lewis structure of sodium chloride. Now let's look at our next example, magnesium fluoride. Magnesium is a metal with two valence electrons. Fluorine is a nonmetal with seven valence electrons. Fluorine is a halogen, just like chlorine. So each fluorine atom wants only just one electron. So magnesium has two. One of those two electrons will go to the first fluorine atom, and the other one is going to go to the second fluorine atom. By the way, whenever you see a full arrow, it represents the flow of two electrons. A half arrow represents the flow of one electron. When magnesium give away its two electrons, it's going to acquire a two plus charge. When fluorine acquires one electron, it's going to gain a minus one charge. We'll just put minus. But we need to write the four lone pairs around each fluoride ion. And so this is the Lewis structure for the ionic compound magnesium fluoride. Now let's look at the next one, potassium oxide. So we have two potassium ions in this formula, but we're going to draw two potassium atoms and one oxygen atom. Each atom of potassium contains one valence electron. Oxygen is a calcogen that has six valence electrons. So oxygen wants to have eight valence electrons, kind of like fluorine and chlorine. And so it's going to acquire two electrons. Thus, in this example, each potassium metal atom is going to deliver one electron to the oxygen atom so that it can get a total of two. So let's put oxygen in the middle since it has a bigger charge. So because oxygen acquired two electrons, it's going to have a two minus charge. On the other hand, each potassium ion I mean, each potassium atom gave away one electron, so they will both have a plus one charge. So this is how we can draw the Lewis structure for this particular ionic compound. Now let's consider another example. What if we have this, aluminum oxide? How can we draw the Lewis structure for that? By the way, for K2O, you can also write it this way. You could put 2K plus and then an O2 minus afterward. So the coefficient 2 tells that we have 
it, it indicates that we have two potassium ions. So that's another way in which you could write the Lewis structure for potassium oxide. Now in this example, we have two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms. Each aluminum atom has three valence electrons. And we know that each oxygen atom has six valence electrons. So each oxygen atom wants to have eight valence electrons. So this aluminum will give the first oxygen atom two electrons, and then the third one is going to go to the middle one. This aluminum is going to give one electron to the middle oxygen, and then two to the one on the bottom. And so we're going to have two aluminum three plus cations, because we have two of them, and each of them gave away three electrons. So as an ion, they will have a three plus charge. And we have three oxide ions, each with a minus two charge. And they all have four lone pairs. So that's the Lewis structure for aluminum oxide.